Okay, so you've got your rendering, you're happy with it, you enjoy it in the background, um, looks nice, but you want to place it into an environment. So one of the things is first, you've got to find the environment that you want to place it in. That can be the biggest problem or the hardest thing to do because what you need to do is just spend a whole lot of time searching. Um, couple things that needs to happen with those with that image is that you need to find one that is the right resolution that has the right layout you want um, that's the right size now you can bring it into Photoshop and crop things down um, but it can be cumbersome so you really want to find it uh, I'm going to use this image um, but there's some things that I have to pay attention to when I do it is you know, as you can see, there's a depth of field here or focus. So if I put my bottle out here, and I'll show you this in there, it's going to look beautiful. The bottle's going to look beautiful, but everything else looks blurry. But that's the image that I'll use. So let's dive in. So we've got it here. And basically what you're going to use is you're going to use a back plate. So you've got a whole lot of back plates that are out there existing. Um, you can see here, I can have my bottle on the road, um, but it doesn't necessarily look like it's on the right angle. I can dump it into the desert, you know, a variety of things I can do. So let me just make sure I delete that. Um, so for this, I want to actually use that one back plate that I had. So what I'm going to do is I can come over here and I can go to my environment. Or let me rephrase that. We're going to go to environment. We're going to change it from background to backplate, which we have. We want to find the backplate that we want. So I've saved that in the folder. Now, again, you can also go into um, the cloud menu, see if it's there. You can also go to a website called CG Trader or CG, uh, wait, CG Trader, which has free models, but it also has free backgrounds or free HDRI images and things of that nature. Or you can go to, I forget what it is, texture, textures.com. Um, if I type in something to say, you know, bar, didn't find anything, but it'll find shaders in that that try to match. So you can do a lot of searching and find a lot of free ones as well. Um, but for this, I found the one that I wanted. I'm going to import it. I'll find the one that I want, which was this one because I had cropped it. I'll hit open then it's in my download so I'll just double click on it oops and then I'll crash key shot for some reason so let's try that again okay so let me just delete that camera So you can kind of see if I zoom in and I make it bigger, it doesn't necessarily fit. Not sure how I'm going to get it to fit. Because um, I could sit here and I could kind of move it around a little bit and try to adjust it like that. But you can see as I do this, the glass doesn't look like it's fitting. So basically what I want to do, create a new camera. Because I always want to keep my free camera. I'm going to call this one Scene Match. And basically what I want to do is I want to come down and I want to click on match perspective within that camera. So if I go match perspective, what it does is it gives me all of the vanishing points. Now, just like when you're doing a sketch, um, there's three point perspective, two point perspective. So two point, you can see that the vertical lines disappear, um, three point, you know, so 
and it all depends on your camera. You may want to test it to see what one looks best. But you can see they're already kind of going in the direction. So what you're trying to do is tell Keyshot what is the perspective of the image because it can't read the camera. So you can see that the blue ones go off into a vanishing point. So what you want to do is find two lines that you can reference in your image that have ink going off in a vanishing point. Um, something that else that helps a little bit too is by coming down here and turning on the ground grid. So you can kind of see how it starts matching up that way, but that doesn't really work all that well for this particular instance. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this one and I'm going to drop it in along a line that matches that perspective as best as I can. I'm then going to take this one up here and match it up to here because this is giving me the perspective of this image. So now the next ones I want to do is I want to find something that goes the depth wise. Um, so for this one it's going to be a little bit harder. So let's see if I can let's see if I can just use this. Normally I would like to use ones at the different ends because it gets the focal points better. So I'm just going to kind of line it up with that as the best as I can. And then if you can't match it, just remember that that is not, um, having them go off like that would not be the proper perspective. So you can kind of just look and get them set up. Now I want to find ones that I can do vertical. So there's one down there. Let's go with that. And then let's grab a vertical here. And you can see each time I do this, the bottle is starting to align up a little bit better. So now you can kind of start seeing that the bottle's in the position that I want it. Now, if I'm down here, let's zoom in. And again, I'm gonna use images in the background as reference. So if that's my glass, I know my bottle's a little small um, because it's closer to us. So I'm going to use that glass there as a reference. Um, so we'll make it a little bit larger and we can put it in. Now you can see too, if I change from two point to three point, if you look very closely, it does change the bottle positioning. Um, sometimes the three point perspective, if it is so minute, you don't really need it. But we can do the two point. Um, and you can also see here, well, maybe I don't have these quite right. So let's try to adjust them a little bit and see if we can get something better. So really, that's the nice thing is about finding the ones that, you know, an image where you can pull that as a reference. So there we can see that. Let's say that that's going to be good. Um, now you can see here that it's beautiful crisp, but it doesn't match with the picture because the picture has a focal point here. Um, so what you could do is come in and go to depth of field modify the depth of field so that it matches up with the picture. Obviously not that. To get it to be that little bit of a blur, you can see that I'm starting to get somewhat of a blur there. Um, overall, it's still way too crisp for this picture because the lighting doesn't necessarily match. Um, that's another big trick is not just getting your model into the position right or to look right in the picture from an orientation standpoint but also to get the lighting to match so the nice thing about that is let me just turn off depth of field we'll zoom out a little bit you can see now it starts to look a little bit better because it's not in the area that is blurring so this is where you've got it in there you've got it laid down but your lighting may not be right. 
So what you can do is come back to your environment and <clears throat> you can try to do a bunch of different types of environments to see if it lights up properly. Um, the reality is, is it's never going to quite work. It's going to be kind of hit or miss because um, it's not actual lighting for this bar. So normally what I would do if I'm really trying to do a photorealistic one is I'll purchase HDRI imagery um, that I can then use whether it be a kitchen or whatever. So what the HDR, HDRI image allows me to do is I can use it not only as the back plate but then much like over here where you see the lightings being used these are all HDRI images I can then use this image let's say this was an HDRI one I can use this one as my lighting as well um, so it'll give me more accurate lighting um, <clears throat> now now once I've done that basically what I want to do is I can come in after a lot of time tweaking and adjusting I want to come in and do rendering now here is something on the pro version that you can't do with just the standard version is that you can export all the render passes so if there's a you know reflection in there it'll render out just the reflection so this will bring in a whole bunch of different layers so let me just show if I just do this as an output and I'll just dump it in there oops oops hold on all right render okay render is almost done So there's that. Let me open up Photoshop. Keeping in mind too, um, when you see really massive, beautiful photographic renderings, the amount of post-production work that is done is amazing. Like I mean, there's just so much. Um, so if you're trying to get your, you know, if you see these renderings that are photorealistic. Um, and you're trying to do it all in Keyshot, it could be or can be very hard because a lot of the things are done in um, Photoshop afterwards. So if I open this up, you can see I've got one layer here. Um, not much I can do with it. It's in there. Uh, I could come in and make this look a little bit more Gaussian blur. Wait, where's my Gaussian blur? There we go. The problem is, is it's going to blur the entire image. So I can't kind of get that realism for the bottle because it's blurring the entire image. So let's just say that's what we want. Now, if I come back in and I go to my output mode and I say I want to render out layers and I want all of these to come in. So then I'm just going to do a render in background. Let's just wait for it to finish. Okay. Now, we'll close that minimize that what you'll see when you render it out in the folder now it didn't give me just one layer or one image it went and did each each pass and saved it out individually so in order to do renderings um, it does a variety of passes that's what takes so long first it does the the specular then it does the highlights and then it does a variety of things so here you can see that 
it's got the full image. But now it's got my clipping mask. Oh, hold on. Should be more there. It's got the diffuse. It's got the lighting. So what I can do is I can go and say, let me just close this out. Let me bring in the 404. What I can then do, or I should be able to do, is bring in my different layers and place it. So that'll get placed just like that. What I can do then is, let's say I wanted to quickly isolate the bottle with this pass. I can select here, come in here, uh, go select, go inverse. Create a new layer. Now what I can do is I can come in very quickly with that clipping mask. I can go filter. Let's add some noise because there's always a little bit of noise that doesn't get shown up into um, renderings because they're just sometimes they're too perfect. But we just want just enough to get some imperfections. And usually I like to go with Gaussian and sometimes monochromatic. So here you can see a whole lot. Here you can see just a tad, but we're gonna go with that. Let's bring the image back up. Okay. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this and I'll go and do a filter, do a blur, a little bit of a Gaussian blur. And it's not much. It's just enough because you can see when there's nothing there, you can see in the background, there's just a little bit of a blur. So let's do that. Let's zoom out. I can also bring in the other layers. So this is actually, um, this layer was the lighting or was the highlight? Was lighting. So what I can then do is same thing as before. So normally I would create a clipping mask, but I'm gonna come in here, I'll turn this on. Uh, I'll turn that off. I'll bring it into here. I'll go select inverse. Hit delete. Ah. Hold on. What, what am I doing here? There we go. Oh no, what did I just do? Bear with me. There we go. Sorry, that took way longer than it should have. So what I can do now though, is I have a separate layer here that I can adjust my normals on. So I can make it hard light, soft light. I can do a color burn. I can do a variety of things that will allow me to actually do nothing. Um, oh, come on, why is this doing this? 
Anyways, I'll walk through that later. It's been a while since I've done this. But you, hey Shavis, I have a question, and I'm sure it would actually be a lot more work to do it this way if it's possible. Yeah. Could you like, if you felt so inclined to like, kind of stage up your area and actually take the photograph, and that way you have all that data? Say that again. If I were to stage like an area with like lighting and like take a picture like and have all those settings and then go into Keyshot and replicate those, is that could I could you do that? So let me like match your settings in real life to Keyshot if you were to take the photograph yourself. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Um I mean that's the whole like that's the big thing about doing the photography or learning about photography your camera can match your real world camera 100 percent um if you want to go and take a picture of a real world place you know and get all that lighting and you know there are there are tutorials out there on how to create your own hdri imagery um with your camera or even there are you know, there are mock lights that you can bring in from photo studios right into Keyshot, moving them around and you manipulate them exactly as if you were in a photo studio. Is that what you're asking? Yeah. Yeah. Same as textures. So I'll do a lot of time searching for a texture um, on the internet, and you never actually find the one that you want 100%. But if I'm doing a high, high-end rendering and I want it to be just the way I want it to be, and I'll use um, Simon's handles, um, where it was kind of a velvety look and feel, um, I could not find any 2D image that matched. So if this was a massive project, I would go out and I would buy that exact material. Then I would set it up take a, you know, I would do whatever I needed to do, get the handprints I want right, the film and that, and then I would take a straight on photograph of it and use that as my texture image. You know, so there's there's a lot of things that people do for these things. Um, a lot of the ones that you download that are really good, they've already gone out and done that. Like they've taken photographs of things or they've taken photographs of materials. Um, that CG texture world, that's kind of what they've already done for you. Um, and you can get them there. So yeah, you can get as advanced as you want. 